اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم As identified in the last session that we can use smart PLS to run the process. Now previously we've been using the process macro in SPSS, SAS. Now previously we've been using process macro in SPSS. But now we can use the process in smart PLS as well. Now what you have to do is you have to download smart PLS and you will see the process here here it is the process so you can use or build your process models in smart pls and now so let's say you've done cbscm and now you want to move to process you can do that or you've done pls scm and now you want to have or do or perform modeling for such models then you can use process now how do we use process i just gave an example in the last session in this session we are going to model or use model one of the process model list or process model templates and perform the same model in smart pls using the process model type now in this model one we've got an iv a dv and one single moderator this is the statistical diagram x m and this is the interaction of x and m influencing y now in moderation if this x and m is significant this means that the moderator is significantly influencing this relationship between x and y now why am i using the process in smart pls the reason is it gives me in those advantages of which the process in spss does not provide me with one of them is it's a graphical user interface so very easy to build model just drag and drop and i can do latent variable modeling in process now so i do not have to create those mean scores third thing is i can have multiple ivs and multiple dvs so i can have more complex models that were not possible with the process macro so let's do this model one and we are going to do complex models later as well what i'm going to do is i already have a project if you don't you can just create a new project and then import data file so what you need to do is to create new project just click new project and let's say i call it sample project then import data file wherever it is in these formats and once you locate it just click on it open it and then click create model and make sure from the model type you select process give it a name let's say model one and then save it and here it is now it will work fine if you have imported the data now in this case i've got my data here so let me delete this one here is my process model prc double click and this is the model i'm interested in testing so what i'm going to do is for now i'm going to delete it so my iv is collaborative culture select and drop it here click on it and move the indicators to the right then i'm going to use role ambiguity click drop here it is and finally organizational performance is my dependent variable now this is exactly as model one now if you look here this is red this is red the reason is they are not connected so click connect drag from cc your iv to your dv and look at the green line leave it and it will be connected now ra moderates the relationship so drag a line from ra to this relationship now this is the moderating effect now if you look here in the process you have indicators and these indicators do not have an arrow an arrow from RA2, RA1 or RA2, so reflective or in otherwise an arrow pointing from the indicators to the variable, latent variable that is formative. So there is no demarcation of reflective formative when you are using the process macro. Now let's 
Now this model is ready. Let me hide the indicators. Now let's run the model. How do we run the model? First save it, calculate and I'm interested in bootstrapping for now. So what will I have when I run path analysis? So let's see. So you can have unstandardized mean centered or standardized. Let's go for or with defaults start. Now look at the path coefficients. These are the path coefficients from CC2OP, RA2OP and the interaction term. But I do not know what whether or not they are significant or not. So you can have your indirect effects, but in this case we do not have any. You can have your R square. But it does not provide me with all the results that I want. So I'm going to go to calculate bootstrapping. 10,000 is recommended, bias corrected and accelerated bootstrap, one tailed, 0 0.05, fixed seed. Let's go for standardized and let's press start. Now here are my results. Now look at this, the inner model, path coefficients and p-values. So you will see the path coefficient and its p-value, the path coefficient and its p-value. Both are significant. There is a negative sign with RA which means RA will weaken the relationship between CC and OP. Now let's further clarify it. RA weakens the positive relationship between CC and OP. So it negatively moderates the relationship between collaborative culture and OP. And if you go to path coefficients, look at this. CC to OP, there is a positive and significant impact. RA to OP, well, I'm not interested in direct relationship of RA with OP. I'm interested in the moderating effect. So I'm going to use this one. Now this is negative 0.127. Is it significant? Yes, it is significant. So RA weakens the positive relationship between CC and OP. So when you increase the role ambiguity within the organization, what happens is it weakens the significantly positive impact of collaborative culture on organizational performance. Now, one thing that we do is when we have significant moderating effect, we see the levels of the moderator and how that changes the relationship. So for that, what you can do is you can go to conditional direct effects. And if you look here, this is positive one or at RA or the impact of CC on OP conditional on RA at plus one standard deviation. This is the impact of CC on OP conditional on RA at minus one standard deviation or CC on OP conditional at mean that average level of RA. So if you increase the role ambiguity, this is what happens. So from average level, it further decreases. But if you lower role ambiguity, the impact gains strength in comparison to what was there or the effect at average level of role ambiguity. So with an increase and decrease, you can see that there is a significant amount of change in the impact of CC on OP. Look at the p-values. At all levels, it is significant. So this is conditional direct effect. So what happens to the relationship between CC and OP at different levels of the moderator? So when the moderator is high or there is high role ambiguity, low role ambiguity, average role ambiguity. Now we can obviously uh, we can do slope analysis for this as well. Now one slope that is provided by smart PLS, you will get it here. Calculate path analysis, start and simple slope analysis. Now look at this. Now if you look here, you've got three lines. One is minus one standard deviation that is low role ambiguity mean level of role ambiguity high level of role ambiguity and this is the impact of cc on op so let's see at ra at mean that is the blue line let's try to understand the blue line so at average level of role ambiguity if you increase collaborative culture it leads to an increase in op now how do we interpret the slope now the easiest way to interpret this slope is to look at the line that is steeper. 
Now this red line appears to be much steeper in comparison to the other lines. Now what is this red line? This means low role ambiguity. So when you have low role ambiguity, if you increase collaborative culture, this leads to a more sharper increase in organizational performance in comparison to the other two lines, which is the blue line and the green line. Now, if you look here at the green line, when you have got higher role ambiguity, although you are increasing the collaborative culture, but it does not lead to a similar increase in organizational performance. Now, this is how you can use process macro to perform your moderation analysis. So instead of using the process macro in SPSS, you can use the process in Smart PLS with the graphical user interface. I hope this session would have helped you understand how to use process in Smart PLS. Thank you very much.